Um, the way we work is that career support at UCL is really to help um, people uh, manage their own career pathways. And we get involved with students at whatever stage in thinking about the career that you may be um, at. And we have a dedicated staff in the UCL careers team. Those of you who are current students know that already. Um, and we also have careers tutors who are actually in academic departments. Satu was mentioned by our last speaker. One or two other uh, people mentioned members of staff. But um, the way it works is that we have careers consultants. I'm not standing before you as an expert in the built environment. I'm standing before you more as, as, as a specialist in career management and in recruitment and in getting jobs and that kind of thing. My, my field is personnel and um, training and recruitment. Um, and so where we stand is uh, between the uh, academic world and the placement side of things and, and also what you get in the way of jobs at the end. So careers tutors, dedicated staff and consultants work together in a kind of triangle. So all of you here will have different expectations. I mean, admittedly, some of you who are, who are prospective students will be thinking about how the programs are going to be adding to your knowledge base, hopefully. But you're also going to be thinking, you know, what added value is it going to give you? And so people undertake these programs for all sorts of reasons and at all sorts of times in life, part-time, full-time as you did, and so forth. And for all sorts of reasons and various times in life. So these expectations that you have, everyone here has different ones, and it's important to know how the program's going to actually add to your experience, how it's going to um, uh, develop your skills, your attitudes, and your qualities. We're not just talking here about a body of knowledge and technical skills, we're talking here about the way it's going to transfer to anything that you might want to be doing. So what I'm hoping that um, our, we, we do in careers alongside the academics and our careers tutors is to help you think about your field, your area, your discipline, and gain confidence and consistency, or consistency particularly in that throughout, develop that, Develop skills on your specialist front, and that means adding to your confidence, as we've heard today, and also, of course, building networks. We've heard networks have been, you know, emphasized by numbers of our speakers tonight, or, or at least four of them, how important networking is, and helping you have access to content, to contacts during the time you're actually studying, and also afterwards. And, of course, in the potential career pathways that we have, um, going from where you might be studying, whether it's a master's or, or, or an undergraduate or indeed a PhD course, you can either continue in, well these are just, just outlines there, continue in academia like Anna did, um, sort of linear progression from where you were at, more and more of the same but more and more specialising, or you can, as we heard from um, Sharon and Lisa and, and Anna and um, Faraz, this kind of uh, using your, um, changing the emphasis perhaps, but using your uh, background in a professional role and continuing your, your professional development in your professional areas, whether this is in planning or in architecture or in um, urban development or whatever it is, but um, where your credibility and your, and your, and your um, experience is valued and useful. And there are some people who find themselves in alternative kinds of work, which makes use of these transferable skills that you've got. But um, um, using more those skills as opposed to necessarily the, the subject knowledge that you would have. Um, Gina may be an illustration of that, but of course she's using her development um, uh, and her background in the, same, in the same way. But she's got a more radical change in her career. So the message really from this is, that there are various different pathways which are either more of the same, changing the emphasis, or being more radical about it. And we're here in terms of careers um, staff and team to help uh, decide on that as you go. So the skills enhanced by any kind of master's course you might do, and this we can go very, very quickly through this, Bridget, um, <laughs> those kinds of things. Um, the first column will be the core of things that will be enhanced, and then, of course, um, there will be the, um, whatever the case, whatever your level of study, um, but particularly the masters, you know, you'll, you'll be good doing those core things, and then the additional employability skills, or, or what any employer will expect of you in that second column. Yeah. And
And if we move on to the next slide by a research study, although we haven't, been, we don't think, I don't think we have research students here, um, obviously the emphasis on the core and subject knowledge will be in those in the first column and, um, and again building on the uh, skills that are on the second. And um, so really in the careers um, side of things in my area, uh, we work with departments and, and, and different areas of the bar that in those sort of, um, those sorts of, uh, that, that sort of progression. So first of all, looking, exploring, in, in, in a way doing a kind of self-audit, what is it that you're going to have to offer yourself? What's important to you? What gets you up in the morning? Where are your emphasis are going to, going to be? What is the added value of your studies? How are you going to articulate that to people? Then we look at the menu. We see what opportunities there are around for you to take advantage of and make sure you're exposed to those. It's rather like going to a restaurant and read the menu before you order the food. Well, um, while you're actually on course, you um, can uh, evaluate the opportunities and options. And then, of course, once you've sold some ideas to yourself, you're also going to have to articulate to other people and, and your basis for your decisions and so forth. And um, of course, at the end of it all, and this is where most people come to the career service, and you know, when it comes to doing a CV or when you're actually applying for a job, unless you've gone through the first three stages that I've just mentioned on that slide there, and these slides are designed for you to read here and now, not so much on the net afterwards. Um, that, that's the kind of process uh, we, we, we take you through, but also assisting you at all those stages, whatever those, um, whatever your needs are. And the way we do that, as we've said, um, is, is by supporting you for that stage when you're thinking you're at the department of careers consultant, the careers uh, tutors, and our uh, UCL uh, consultants. We have a central office which is at the University of London Union building, just uh, opposite Waterstones, and um, you know there's a whole department there which you can come to see us. In, or we work also in the partners giving talks and, and that kind of thing as well. Um, there are one-to-one -one guidance, there's also group work as well, and also different kinds of events to which employers come, and specialist level of advice for undergraduates as well as postgraduate students. The reason why I'm flagging this up is that some students who are current students may not be as aware of the group services as you should be necessarily, and some of you know it very, very well. Um, so, uh, just to know where you get the support, we'll move on very, very quickly from most of this kind of march, marching on. So, there are some websites there which you don't want to be reading um, now, but the first, well, you can read them now, but the undergraduates certainly should be using our website as the key gateway to information. That every year there's an annual careers program which is published by the UCL Career Service, which deals with cross campus work and also departmental work. Masters and research students, I said, have specialist advice through the grad school and through, through us. And of course, research staff do as well. And I'm sure these will be uploadable from the website, won't they? Will students have access to this afterwards, Bridget? Um, possibly? Yes, or whatever. Um, the fact is that those, those websites are useful for you to make an effort at some stage. So that's our UCL um, career service building, but it's also the University of London Union. There's a swimming pool at the bottom floor, and a travel shop, and an optician, and a cafeteria. If you want to come up to the fourth floor, you're very, very welcome to see us there, or otherwise, obviously, I'll see you in departments.